to the computer. Hi, I see Judith. I don't see you. You don't see me? Yep, I don't. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Hello, honey. Hi. This is a major accomplishment for me. <laughs> but my screen is still not catching, you know, catching this. I'm going to hit another little tab here, which uh, maybe will make things different. All right, let me share my screen. Okay, I'm going to... I'm gonna um, unmute, or I'm gonna mute everyone so that everyone can hear me. Can, that, can everyone see me? Nope. No one can see me. Oh, start video. Hello. Now can everyone see me? Can anyone see me now? Nope. I put beautiful mountains. Oh, I see you when you're in the bottom. Ah. Oh, I see you now. I have a problem seeing myself. I just see the name Camille, but we don't have to worry about that. I don't want to hold up the class for that. Okay, I don't know. As as long as can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. We're talking mountains with gorgeous color foliage below it. Um, I just see. I you just put on Gito, Gito, Giotto. Yes. Giotto. Oh, yeah. Can everyone see the screen? Yep. The kiss, right? So I've got, uh, I think some of you have yourselves muted, which is fine. I just want to let you know that you have to hit unmute in order to uh, say something. But if there's too many people talking anyway, you won't be able to hear me. So just keep yourself muted while we do this. And you can always uh, chat in, you can type in questions. So uh, today we're talking about Philip Gustin and George Kondo. Um, Philip Gustin is the older artist. He was born in 1904, 1904, I believe. He was born in Montreal, Canada, and he, um, his family moved to LA in order to flee. Um, they left Russia to flee racism, and then they moved from Canada to the US and um, his work is really intensely based in narrative and cartoon, but it didn't used to be. When he first started painting, he was an abstract expressionist painter. And he, um, he went to LA as a young student. He went to high school, Jackson Pollock actually. Some of you may know Jackson Pollock is the, the one who does the splatter paintings. And uh, they got in trouble together for making fun of the English department and got kicked out of school. So that's sort of just a funny side note story. So Philip Gustin's work is the top right piece. And I wanted to start with this one because I was talking to the dean of the school who I'm working with right now in New York. I'm currently teaching a class at the New York Studio School and Gustin, Philip Gustin was one of the founders of the school. So it's really important. He's a really huge, important painter for my school and for me. So I asked the dean who uh, studied under him and worked with him what he, what he thought about Gustin. And he said, well, most of his work is based in Yoko. And that is this artist to the left, based in the 1200s, early 1200s. So you can see there's a lot of very modern artwork that's coming from old masters. Um, and you can see the compression in this painting, the kiss. This is a, a zoom in of this painting, very famous painting. But you can see the compression of these two heads together and also the side eye, it's sort of an Egyptian side eye, which he maybe learned from the Egyptians. And then you can see uh, Gustin's version of that same painting um, but in his own way. And then Philip Gustin, or sorry, George Kondo, who's alive and working at this time on this is his version of a similar thing. So you can see um, the comparisons that I'm making here. I hope you can see them and, and understand what I'm trying to do here. So we have three artists, but we're really focusing on two of the artists. Um, Philip Gustin from the early 19, or, um, um, 19, 19, forties, 1940s, 
and um, George Congo, who is alive and working today. Um, how do I move to the next screen? So I just wanted to, to point out a few things. So Philip Gustin, the, the painter on the top here, he was working in as an abstract painter and he decided that he needed to go back to the figure. And he went back to the figure in such an interesting way. He decided to do it based in a cartoon style. Both of these artists are working in a cartoon style and I think this is really important because what we're seeing is um, everybody understands cartoons. All of us are able to relate to these paintings and that's why they're sort of, um, pivotal in what they're doing. Now, Philip Gustin, you can see these uh, white figures, and these may remind you of the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, and what happened is his family was Russian born, and they moved um, to Canada to flee racism, and then they moved to LA, and they found out that there was, um, they were encountering a lot of racism then. And he had a really hard life. A lot of really tough things happened to him. His father was um, a very disturbed man who could not really make enough money and he felt very depressed and he ended up hanging himself when Philip Gustin was 10 years old and he found his body when he was just a 10 year old boy. So you oftentimes see these fragments of bodies and see this leg here and there's a foot and a leg and some blood and there's there's uh, there's heavy things there's things about time and bricks and he he went through a lot of things with death and I think a lot of his work is based on the racism that he encountered and the deaths that he encountered his brother as well uh, was run over by a car his own car in fact um, that was not um, his own car, the brake wasn't left on, so his car ran over his legs and he had to have his legs amputated and then he ended up passing away as well. So this artist, you can see there's so much tension in his work and there's so much narrative going on and he called himself a narrative action painter. He painted very quickly and he painted a story while he was talking, um, while he, in, his, in his work. And George Kondo down here, he did, a, he did something that he calls, he took from the masters, he took from Giotto, he took from Rembrandt, he took from all of the old masters and he sort of created his own work based on the portraits that they made. So some of his portraits look old and new at the same time. So he reinvented old master painting in his own way. But um, these, this lower painting is, is called New York City, and it's his version of the crowds of people in New York. And you can tell uh, there's some cubism going on, there's some bits of Picasso that are coming into play here, and then there's the element of cartoon in both of them. And what's interesting is you can go to some pretty dark places with cartoon and it still works, and you're still able to tell a story Oops, with that. Okay, we'll just move on to the next one. This one is, um, they both really like smoking. <laughs> they both smoked themselves all the time. I actually met a George Congo, or, uh, the school that I'm at right now. We honored him the first year that I was in school and he came and gave a talk, this one to the right, uh, about his work. And it was, I didn't have a clue who he was at the time, but now I wish I had paid a little more attention, of course. Um, but I did get to shake his hand and say hi. And then Philip Gustin helped found the school um, because at the time in New York, abstract expressionist painting was a really big deal. People like Joan M Mitchell, Mark Rothko, um, Cy Twombly, um, who else? Lots of, lots of abstract painters. And uh, he came back to the figure and said, the figure is not dead, I'm going to paint it. And he blew everyone away by doing this. And he was met with a lot of controversy. Um, and uh, the school, they started teaching classes um, that were about coming back to the figure and painting and drawing eight hours a day and really focusing on composition and 
narrative within the work. So that's what he's doing here. And we, there is even a studio in the school that was his studio, and it's called the Gustin Studio now. Um, I'm not there right now, or else I would tell you. I'm out in uh, Old Westbury in New York. We're painting the landscape, and I'm currently in a closet <laughs> so that I can do this lecture. Um, so, next painting. Oh, th this is a self-portrait, the one on the left of Philip Gustin. This is his self-portrait, and you can see there how thick the paintings are. He would paint them over and over and over and over again. And then you see George Congo's version of a similar figure well, smoking a cigarette as well. But what he did was he chopped up the faces with, you know, he cut them up sort of like cubist, mixed with cartoon, mixed with old masters. So both of these artists are sourcing from the past to find what they're working on today. Now there's two ways, there's two ways people look at things. Uh, some people say you should never look at current living artists. You should only focus on artists from the past. And both of these artists are very much into that um, line of thought. You can also see that Gustin doesn't care that much about a whole spectrum of colors. He worked, worked a lot in reds pinks, whites, blacks, um, and sometimes you see some blues, but there, there's a lot of a limited color palette going on. Here is two versions of their still lives in a cartoon style. And um, you, you can see, you know, they're having a lot of fun and there's a lot of elements in these paintings that you can read into and decide what they mean to the artist or to the viewer. Um, maybe it's, this is just his table in his studio, maybe, and again, the clocks come into play. Always worrying about time and pressure and how much time we have on this earth. And then you'll notice that George Condon has a lot of plain backgrounds. He'll start with a plain colored background and then he'll work the figure into it. Uh, last but not least, they both sort of did a I can't tell what Philip Gustin's painting says here. I think it says, I don't know what it says. If anyone knows what this says, please chime in and tell me. Um, but this one on the left obviously says Kondo. And I just found it funny that they both did this and maybe Kondo was looking at Gustin and uh, maybe, I'm sure, well, Gustin did it first, but I don't know if Kondo was looking at Gustin in that sense. So I want to hear from you guys what you think about these paintings. Do you think they're wonderful? Do you think they're horrible? Do you think that they're, uh, um, do you think that they're fun? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Who wants to say something? I will say something. Can you hear me? Yes, Judith is speaking. Judith is speaking. I think their art is angry. I don't think there's anything that's comfortable about them. I think it's reactionary. I think, I remember um, Gustin when I was studying art at NYU, and his palette was grays and browns, and it looked, his painting looked like a palette that need, needed cleaning badly. <laughs> I don't think there is any joy in either of these. Of course, I see the similarities, and I appreciate your stepping in and pointing those out, like the texture on the letters, which is yeah. pretty obvious. Um, but to me, they're angry, and it's certainly anything that I would go out of my way to see. And if he's making a statement, he can write about it rather than paint. So I don't think his painting is very good. Okay, and that's, that's a valid point, and I think they both agree that they, they really put themselves down the rabbit hole, and in one of the interviews that was on the website, um, George Kondo talks about how, how far he pushes himself to madness, and he says, I will go and paint until I feel mad, and um, I think there is a lot of torture in all of these things, and I think... Uh, you're very right about that, and it ha has got to do with some of their past in, in both cases. And um, I, some people believe that a painting shouldn't matter what the narrative is. It should be about the composition and the color and the form. And these are about narrative. 
So it is also, do you care about narrative in your painting? Do you think it's important to have narrative? Or can it just be a really good, let's, let's say it doesn't matter what it is if you're painting a tire. You could be painting a flower vase and it could be a good, better painting or a good painting um, rather than having to have narrative in the painting. However, I do think that a lot of people are able to be reached through these paintings because it reaches people who may not necessarily understand painting. And so it brings, it allows them in because they can understand cartoon. Does anyone want to say anything on that? Also, a cartoon painter was Lich Lichtenstein. Yeah. Something more of visually appealing to me in his work than in these, which you attribute to a cartoon. Also, I see a lot of linear work in the condo painting, previous slide, which looks a lot like all clay. Ah. Oh, go back further. No, oh yeah, and the, uh, I think it's so angry to me, I wanna just like forget I saw it. <laughs> And I love them. I love these paintings. I think they are, I love, I love Philip Gustin's paintings mostly because I think he challenged what was happening at the time. And I think he helped bring figure painting back. Here we go. Look at the top, the linea. Is that not looking like Paul Clay? Yeah, it is. And there's a, there's outline. There's the, the outline, which is part of the cartoon theme that we're talking about. So does anyone work in sort of a cartoon style ever? Anybody else? Unmute. I'm gonna, oh, there we are. Okay, now I can, I've unmuted the class, the classroom. I can now hear all of you. So the, the bigger classroom, I, think, I don't know if it's Miguel. You can talk now and we can hear you or Camille, or Taria. Anyone want to say anything about cartoon style or narrative within a painting? I, I would like to say I think all painting is narrative because you look at it and there's something that's talking to you. Um, an abstract painting? Yep. Maybe just color fields. You know, look at the background on yeah, and the uh, Kondo's little one. Like the uh, Veterans Hospital and come around the university and come back down on Tennessee Street straight over to a, a shopping center. He's expecting it to be wonderful and they're building all these I'm restaurants. Meet <laughs> Yes, I agree with you. Um, I, I, well, no, I actually, I do think that there's narrative in abstract painting because I think abstract painting, let's talk about painting, I don't think there should be narrative. I'm going to mute everyone because I can't hear anything. Um, is that? You can, uh, you can type in your questions now if you want to. Chat. Anybody, what, did anybody love these artists? Does anyone else like these artists? Try typing it in if you do. Let me see. Fourteen participants, Dwight Little, Judith, Neil. If anyone like these paintings, please just um, type in yes if you do. I just want to hear if anyone really likes, no one likes these paintings? <laughs> I love these paintings. And I think I, the reason I love them is because they did something that no one else has done, but they, like, like Gustin, or like Kondo said, he did it based on the masters. And so did Kondo. They, everyone has started from looking here, looking at old master work in order to find a new way of doing things. And I wonder to myself sometimes, is there, is it possible to make anything new anymore? Have we already done everything we can do or, or can we make a new way of doing something? Um, Taria says, I think I find them humorous. They might be angry, but they do not make me angry or irritated. I really like some of them. 
Um, and I, I, I agree. I, I think some of them are really fun. And I do, you know, life isn't always easy. And it's kind of nice to see that, that there's more to paint than just a beautiful scenery sometimes. But that's, that's my opinion. So if, if you do have a strong opinion, either way, I would love to get an email from you about this. I would love to hear your comparison of what, if you think that these artists are successful in telling their narrative, do you understand what they're trying to tell you here? Do you think that a uh, cartoon is a valid way to paint? Um, or, or not? Or do you think we should be painting realistically? Do you think we should be painting photorealistically? Do you think we should even call this fine art? That's, that's my main question. And will you give it a try and maybe make a painting that's based on cartoon, that's grounded in cartoon? Camille says, uh, I liked the interview videos of their thoughts about their styles and inspiration to paint the way that they do. Yeah, I think that they both have pretty good videos. Sometimes it's hard to find good videos, but in this case, there's pretty strong videos on both of them. So that's exciting too. So um, if you, whether you loved these artists or hated them, there is a comment section now on the website where you can leave a comment on the topic. Uh, it's just in one of the tabs next to weekly topics. And I'd love to hear a, a short paragraph about whether you love these artists or not and why. And uh, please maybe give it a go at I doing some up. sort of narrative history, acting history or yeah. drawing. Um, yeah, um, this lady, she, uh, she goes out, she goes all over the world and takes photographs and then she brings them home and she puts them into a product like, uh, Paint shop, yeah, and then enhances them. Okay, I think David's talking. Okay, but um, so that's that's all I wanted to to go over today with these artists, and and I hope that if you do have a strong opinion, please let me know. Send me an email or post it in the comments in the new comment section on the website, so that we can keep talking about this and decide whether you think it's good or bad or wonderful or horrible and if it makes you mad or makes you sad sometimes that's even good too you know you, to have some getting a reaction at all is sometimes better than getting no reaction right from from your painting so that's all i have to say i'm going to go back out into the landscape now we're in these amazing westbury gardens and um help some painters make some paintings so please uh, send me an email, whether you like or don't like these artists or what you like about it. And if you make a cartoon narrative painting, please send me a picture of that. We'd love to see it. And if you would like me to post it on the website, I would love to start a section of your artwork um, that's based on the topics that we're talking about. So maybe you did one of the paintings based on, um, the Greek myths, and you can send me that, or you can send me this week's drawing if you would like to do that too. So thank you everyone, and have a good rest of your week, and I will talk to you again, probably from the closet, and have a great week, and I hope you enjoy this week's videos that I'm gonna put up. Thank you, bye. Let's see how I end this. Stop. Bye. <laughs> Well, actually, I'll stay on if anyone else has questions. I see another chat question. Oh, that was a thank you. Anyone else have questions that they want to type into the chat section? I'm here for a few more minutes. Otherwise, you can leave if you don't have any questions. I see the big group on the screen there. Thank you. The class is great. You're welcome. How did you come to pick these? Um, that's a great question. So I started by, um, I started with thinking about the Titian and Kyle Staver once I saw that theme. And then I started thinking about who could I pair up that makes sense to me 
that I could, uh, that I, that helps me learn because like I said, in the art history class, I just can't see one artist and then completely another artist. I have to compare it and contrast it to understand. And I spent the last five years of my life learning these artists in grad school and meeting some of them and um, living in New York City and trying to really understand art history. And the more that I understand which current living artists, who they are looking at, that's who I, that's who I, so that's who I put them with. So I know Kyle Saber's looking at Titian. I know that uh, Philip Gustin is looking at Giotto, and I know that George Kondo is looking at Philip Gustin. So I'm just trying to find who's sourcing from who from the history and who I can put them with. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Have a great week, everybody. Enjoy next week's videos. I'll get them up as soon as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. And Bye.